today I want to talk to you about our moving average strength system. As you know, all the systems we design here at Trading Winds are based on trend and momentum. They are solely based on technical analysis and have been uh, uh, tested and traded over many years on, through all different types of markets. Uh, they work across the board on stocks, equities, options, futures, you name it, any time frame. So today's presentation, <clears throat> I'm going to start off as usual with my money management rules. Uh, I never think it's fair to give you a strategy without the money management rules. It's a very, very important part of your trading plan. Then I will talk about the components of the system. This one happens to rely <clears throat> on just two, two things we'll be looking for on our chart. It's very, very simple, very easy to use, and actually very easy to trade with. And I'll show you that by the time we're done here today. Um, and then I'll bring up my live charts and start walking you through the setup. Hopefully we'll have enough time for Q&A as well. Um, so it's a good thing we're, we're starting a couple minutes early. We'll try to squeeze in as many of your questions as possible. Let's get started with our money management uh, rules. <clears throat> Number one, I'm sure you've heard this many, many times, and uh, you may scoff at it, may laugh at it. It is super important, actually. Um, the times, most often when traders make mistakes, are when they're not feeling quite well or they're distracted. They're just simply not focused. And that's when mistakes happen. So when you sit down to trade, whether it's day trading, swing trading, whatever it is, when it's time to look at your chart and make decisions, you do need to have a clear mind. So turn off all distractions and make sure you're focused. If you're not feeling quite right that day, just shut off the laptop and move on. It'll save you a ton of money, trust me. Um, also, trading is really all about how you manage the order once you're in it, rather than selecting that entry. Any of us can throw a dart at a list of stocks and, and, and then open up the chart and pick an entry point and we've got a 50-50 ch chance of being right but it's how you manage that order that really matters. And for you to be able to manage it appropriately, you really do need to remain calm and be able to think clearly. So if you're worried about the amount of money you have in that trade, you will not be able to, to do that. So it is extremely important that you trade with an amount that is completely insignificant to you. So for some of you, It'll be a few hundred dollars for others. It'll be several thousand. The amount actually doesn't matter. What matters is that it feels completely insignificant to you. That way you're not worried about it. You're able to think clearly and follow your rules to a T. Now, uh, one of the rules we use to reduce our exposure when we're, we're trading is to limit the amount of money we put in any one trade. Uh, we never put more than 5% of our account balance in any one trade. That way, if the worst case scenario happens and the trade completely blows up on us, we still live to trade another day. It's never a problem. So always trade with a, a, a small amount. Now, this 5% is not a hard and fast rule. In other words, if you have a larger account or as you grow your account, what you want to actually do is reduce that percentage. You want to drop that to, to three, to two and a half, to two, even one percent if you can. That way you will have a nice sizable trade on, but you'll be risking a very, very small amount of your overall balance. That's the real key here. Okay. Now, none of us control the market and uh, we certainly don't have any control over those unexpected events, the black swan type events. Um, and uh, this is why we also follow the rule that we do not put any more than 50% of our account in the market at any one time. So if we follow that 5% rule, the maximum number of trades we can have on at any one time is 10. Um, that way, even if something drastic happens like a 9-11, and we ended up take and we end up taking a loss due to that unexpected event. We still have half of our accounts in there that we can put back into the market and make back that loss. Okay? And it is also always, always very important to spread out your trades. 
how many times have we seen the market jump two, 300 points, and then very next candle, it, it pulls back uh, two, 300 points, right? So when you get a strong day in the markets, one way or the other, you will get a lot of setups in that direction. If you jump in and put in five, six, seven trades at a time, and then the next day the market reverses on you, you're gonna find yourself in a huge hole. And that's what you want to avoid here. So what you want to do is, out of all the setups that you find, select the one, maybe two, of the highest probability trade setups that you can, uh, that you can find for whatever time frame you, are, you are, are trading, okay? So never enter more than one, maximum two, at any one given time and spread them out and you should be fine. Now, we also have a couple other rules or they're more like sayings that we live by here at Trading Wins. And one of them is you'll never go broke taking profits. And the reason why we can say that is the level of risk that we take in our trades is extremely small. And you'll see it once I go through the presentation here uh, that <clears throat> the risk that we use uh, or, or, that, or that gets us into that trade is very, very small. So you can actually take small profits and still do very well. But this is really meant for those of you who are just starting out. One of the most difficult things as a trader that you're going to find is remaining in a trade, <clears throat> excuse me, for the life cycle of that trade. So what you want to do is get used to banking those profits at the beginning, even when they're small take those profits, it'll help boost your confidence, it'll help you gain some confidence in the actual system that you're using. And then as you gain experience, you will learn how to remain in a trade a little longer each time, okay? And then eventually it all comes together for you. Now, this second point here, and certainly um, is last, but certainly not least, um, this is the one thing that if you're going to walk away with just one point out of this presentation, this is the one thing I want you to write down and walk away with. So many traders, especially when they first start out, end up thinking that they need to be the greatest stock picker in the world, right? You need to be right almost always. And it's so wrong. Uh, it's really not about whether you're right or wrong, and it's not about you at all. Remember, you don't control the market. What matters is how much money you make when you're right versus how much you lose when you're wrong. So what I'm referring to here is A, controlling your risk, but two, is focusing on execution, okay? You should have a checklist of items that you need to see before you enter a trade along with a checklist before you exit a trade. And those should be defined ahead of time. Now I'm gonna walk you through this strategy and I'm gonna give you the rules so you can create your, your checklist and follow it. If any of those little boxes cannot be checked off, you should not be entering that trade, okay? This is about execution, not about uh, whether you're right or wrong, okay? It's never ever about whether you're right or wrong. So let's talk a bit about the strategy and the components of the strategy. There's only two things you're gonna be looking for and using on your chart. The number one is something that we've included in all of our in all of our um, strategies. The 20 period simple moving average. Okay, 20 period simple moving average. We, now we have tested this system with uh, exponential, with weighted, the 50, the 100, you name it, different time periods. We've always come back to the 20 for the simple reason that it works best. Okay, and we're gonna be using it for momentum and I'll, I'll explain exactly how in just a moment. Second thing you'll be looking for on your chart is an engulfing candlestick pattern. Now this is a classic reversal pattern. If you're not familiar with candlesticks, no worries. I'm not only gonna explain how to use it and how to recognize it, but how to trade it. Okay, so we'll follow, we'll, we'll go through everything step by step. So let me bring up my charts here and start walking you through this system. Now, before we actually add the 20 period moving average and, and start talking about those engulfing patterns, let's just simply talk about what type of charts you should be trading. This here, ISRG, is a perfect example of the type of chart you want to be trading. Something very predictable, very simple, 
uh, very clean. All right. Obviously, if I ask you what the direction is uh, of the stock or where it should continue going, answer is pretty easy, right? I, I mean, it's it's been steadily climbing higher, and aside from some minor pullbacks, this is in a solid trend and will most likely continue. All right. But if I entered a symbol like this and you tried to trade on a chart like VNQ, for example, all right. If I ask you what the next direction of this is, it's very difficult, isn't it? Very choppy, very ugly, all over the place. Now, there may be areas in here that you can pinpoint a trade on, you know, depending on the strategy that you're using, but no matter what strategy you're using here, or where you try to get in, the chances of being stopped out are extremely, extremely high. And that's what you want to avoid. So when you're trading, and especially when you're using technical analysis, you want a nice, clean trending chart, and there are plenty of them out there uh, that are very, very predictable. You notice that the candles here are all very similar in size, very few wicks and tails. It's just a slow, steady climb, and that's exactly what you want to see. It, it can actually be a slow, steady drop. That's fine as well, as long as it's a nice, clean, solid trend in place. Now, once you have that, what you want to do is add your 20 period moving average. So again, it is a simple uh, moving average that we are using, all right? I'm gonna select that. Let me go in, move this to 20, change the color and thicken it up a little here, and we're good to go. All right, now, as I mentioned, we use the 20 for momentum. What you want to make sure of when you're trading is that you have two things on your side at all times. One is trend, as we mentioned, and this chart is obviously trending nicely. And secondly, is momentum. When you're trading with trend and momentum, half the battle's already won before you even place the trade. Now, how can you read, <clears throat> excuse me, how can you read momentum? Well, there's a couple of different ways. We can take our trend line tool and just draw a line over the price uh, bars here over the candlesticks right so if we look at this here and we just draw the uh, the trend line over over the price the current price here you can see it's a nice about a 45 degree angle higher right nice decent slope so that's strong trend when you've got a an angle like this it's even stronger right so in other words to judge momentum, you're judging the slope of price, okay? So a slight slope in your direction is good. Slightly more is better. A lot more is a lot better, right? The stronger the slope or the more significant the slope, the better. And I always use, I always use about a 45 degree angle and consider that significant. If it's any more than that sloping in my direction, like it was back in here, or up in here, it's even better, all right? Now, the reason why we use the 20 is number one, it, it tends to uh, draw in the line pretty similar to the, the slope of the price, but the advantage here is when price pulls back on you. When it turns around and starts uh, trending lower, if you were to follow price, you know, we would be saying that we have downward momentum here. But in reality, it is just a short-term retracement before a continuation of that move higher. And that's what we need to recognize. So if we have our 20 period moving average on, and number one, it, it, it draws in the slope nicely, but on that retracement, if it maintains its slope higher, if the 20 period moving average continues to slope in that same direction, then it helps you realize that this is temporary. And now we just need to identify an area for an entry here to take advantage of a continuation of that move all right so a very very handy tool one that's very simple to use and helps you spot these setups very very easy okay so <clears throat> let me just see I believe there's a couple of questions um do you find a use for the bands in a 20 MA Bollinger band? Um, 
No, I, I really, I really don't use Bollinger Bands much. Um, what you will find, one of the things you can look at if you're using the uh, the Bollinger Bands around the 20, is that when price gets outside of the Bollinger Bands uh, and then comes back in, uh, that's usually a turning point. But again, it's not a strategy in itself, just something to look for if you've never noticed it. But no, I like to keep things simple, and I only use the 20 period moving average. Now. The other thing we were talking about using is the engulfing candlestick pattern. Now there's bullish engulfing and there's bearish engulfing patterns. And, and, and those are what we are going to use as a reversal signal and as our, our setup. So let me explain. First of all, no stock really goes in a straight line, right? It zigzags like here, it goes up, it pulls back, it goes up, it pulls back and, and et cetera. So it, it looks something, like this, goes up and then it pulls back. So it's at these pullbacks here where you want to be on the lookout for a reversal signal, like back in here, okay? And the setup that you're gonna be looking for is going to look like this. You're gonna get a candle and then you're gonna get another candle that's slightly bigger. So let me color these in first of all, and the colors, the color of the first candle doesn't really matter. I'm going to make it red, but it can be red or green, okay? The next one, though, for a long trade, a trade to the upside, this candle does, does have to be green, all right? So now there's a difference between the actual setup and the trigger to actually get into the trade. So for the purposes of the setup only, we are only interested in the bodies of these candles, all right? So if I zoom in on some of these candles here, you'll see that they have bodies, right, colored in, and then they have these lines at the top or bottom, which we call the wicks or the tails. For the purposes of the setup, we're only interested in the bodies. For the purpose of the entries of the triggers, we are interested in, and will be using the wicks and tails, okay? So for now, we're only interested in the bodies. And what you need to see is that the body of the candle on the right here completely engulfs the body of the candle on the left. Now, they can be at the exact same price level, top and bottom. In other words, they can be completely equal. It can be green on green or it can be red on green, doesn't matter. As long as the body of the candle on the left does not exceed the body of the candle on the right. Okay? So, this is a classic reversal signal known as a bullish engulfing pattern, right? Now, for the purposes of the entry, first of all, I should say what this is telling you is that this short-term retracement here, or pullback, is over and that this trend should continue. So, we have our setup. Now, when do we go in? What we do is we mark the absolute high of this candle, okay? So if there was a wick up here, we would mark it at the high of the wick. I'm just gonna put it near the body here, but it is the absolute high of this candle that we would use uh, as our trigger. So if we saw a trade one tick or one penny above this absolute high, that would be our time to get in and go long. And we can go long by buying the stock, by buying a call option, selling a put credit spread, however you want to do it, um, you go long. And when you go long, your stop goes just below the absolute low of the same candle. So if there was, a, again, another line here at the bottom, the wick, the, the stop would go below the wick, okay? So what this means is you're only ever risking the range of that one candle. So you get to determine what level of risk you are going to take on each trade because you can, you can decide what candle size that you're comfortable with. So if say this was a range of $2, right? And you're not comfortable with that, you, you only want to risk a dollar, well, look for the setups with a, a, a candle that's only ranging $1, for example, okay? You get to determine it, but it's very simple. You wait for trend to be in your favor. 
you read the momentum by the slope of that 20 period moving average and when it's significant enough, at least a 45 degree angle like you see here, and then you start to see a pullback or a retracement, you're on the lookout for an engulfing pattern. And when you see that, you mark the high, any trade, one tick or one penny above that high, you go long and your stop goes just below the absolute low of that candle. It really is that simple. And then you just manage the trade from there, all right? Now, on the flip side, if you're looking for a short trade, what you need to see is a trend to the downside. Okay? You need to see a trend to the downside. And so a stock is gonna be like this. It'll be trending lower, then it'll pull back. And when it does so at this point, what you're looking for is a bearish engulfing setup, which by the way, is gonna look pretty much identical to the bullish. Let me draw this in and color these, but it's gonna be pretty much the same. The only difference is that the, bullet, uh, the bearish engulfing candle here, the one on the right, is going to be red. So now we could have red on red, we could have green on red, it doesn't matter. But for a short trade, your engulfing pattern, the one on the right, the bigger one, needs to be red, okay? And what you're gonna see, again, for the setup, you're only interested in the bodies, and you need to see that this body here, of the candle on the right, is much bigger, or is, is just bigger, than this body here, the one on the left, okay? It's supposed to completely engulf it. That's why it's called the engulfing pattern. Now, what is this telling us? This is telling us that during this downtrend, when we start seeing a pullback here, a retracement, this pattern here is known as a reversal pattern. It's telling us that this retracement is over and that that downtrend is going to continue. What's our trigger to get in? Our trigger is a trade below the absolute low of the engulfing candle, right? Wick or, or tail and all, the absolute low. If we get a trade, one tick or one penny below that low, we go short and our stop goes just above the absolute high of that same candle. Again, we get to determine what level of risk we are going to take on that trade, okay? Uh, yes, TJ, it is the 20 period simple moving average, correct, based on the close, okay? So this here's your long <coughs> setup, this here's your short. Now, a couple of rules before I actually uh, run through a number of examples with you and that is that what you should be looking for for this engulfing candle is not only that it engulfs this uh, prior candle but that it closes near the high here for long trades and it closes near the low of that session for short trades so these bars again can be any time frame this can be a five minute bar, 15 minute, daily, weekly, monthly, it doesn't matter, you treat it exactly the same, all right? But you wanna make sure that trades near the higher, at least in the top quarter, okay? The higher it closes, close to those highs, the stronger that, that follow through move tends to be, all right? And that's what you want, and it's same, same with the short. Um, now, if, for example, the next candle gaps up. Let's say it gaps and it opens up here. Okay, We have to reassess our risk, don't we? Because we're no longer getting in here, but our stop will remain where it's supposed to be here. So before we would have had risk from top of the candle to the bottom, but now if our entry's up here on that gap, our risk is from up here down to the stop. So my rule for that is, unless it's an extremely small gap, I, I don't trade it. I discard that trade, okay? If it gaps on me on the next candle, I avoid it and move on, okay? Because this was acceptable risk, this no longer is, okay? <clears throat> so you wanna remember that. Now, the other thing you wanna remember is that once you get that, that trade, or excuse me, that trade that triggers you into the trade, the one that trades one tick or one penny above the high here, that needs to happen within the next two bars, OK? 
Okay, so let, let's look down in here, for example, we got that retracement right in here. So we had a nice strong trend, momentum was strong, there's that slope of the 20, it starts to pull back, and here is our bullish engulfing pattern, right? We have the bar here where the body of this candle completely engulfs the body of the previous candle. So we mark the high of this candle, and once we get a trade above it, we go long, stop goes just below the low of the same candle. So our risk is defined here, okay? Now, the trade that happens to trigger us in needs to happen within the next two candles. Again, the time frame doesn't matter. If, it's a, if these are five minute candles, it has to happen within the next 10 minutes. If these are daily candles, it has to happen within the next two days, okay? But you need to see a trade above the high within the next two candles. If you don't, what that means is that mo the momentum wasn't as strong as we initially thought. So we want to skip that trade. The other thing is that if it ever trades below the low here before ever trading above the high, then again, the trade is disqualified, okay? So if the next candle opens down here and trades lower, but then reverses and goes above the high, not good enough. We need it to break the high and continue moving in that direction, okay? And the beauty of this is, once again, you can define your risk, okay? So I'll show you several setups. Some have very wide candles, some have very small. You're gonna get many setups at any given time. One of the things that you can use to compare setups and select the highest probability setups are A, the slope of the, the moving average. So the more significant the slope, the better. The, and B, the size of these candles. So if this one, for example, you can see that it's a little bigger than this candle. It's also a bullish engulfing pattern, right? There's the larger body, completely engulfs the much smaller body. Okay. It doesn't matter that the little wick here goes below the, the low here. It doesn't matter. For the setup, we're only looking at the bodies. Then for the trigger, we incorporate the wicks and the tails. Okay. But you know, if you had one trade that had a, a uh, a candle size like this, and you had another trade that had a smaller candle size, the smaller one carries less risk, right? So it, it, these are all important things. Also, it doesn't matter where the setup happens. In other words, if it happens in front of the moving average, if it overlaps it like it is here, or whether it happens below it, that doesn't matter. What matters is that when you do see this engulfing pattern, what matters is that there is still slope in that 20 period moving average. So if this pullback happened to go a little further and come down in here, chances are that moving average would start flattening out and roll over. If that happens, you've lost momentum and you do not want to take that trade. So it's always important that once you see the setup, you double check the slope of that moving average and make sure that it is still sloping in your direction, okay, or in the direction of the trade. That's what really matters here, <clears throat> okay? Let's look at a few examples. Now, again, it doesn't matter whether um, you're trading a long short, whether you're trading futures contract, forex pair, a stock, five minute, 10 minute, uh, weekly, monthly, it doesn't matter. Here is CMG, Chipotle, and you know how, how they've been getting beaten up for the longest time here. This is what we would call significant momentum lower. Look at the slope there, right? Very, very significant. So you've got that downtrend in place and you have downward momentum. So all we're waiting for here is some kind of pullback or consolidation. So it doesn't have to be a sharp pullback. It, it can go sideways. It can just take a pause. Let's zoom in here for a little, okay? It can just kind of take a pause, a little here or here, okay? What we do want is we want the setup to be somewhat close to the moving average, right? The closer it is, the better. But what you're looking for is that reversal signal. So if you look in here, once we, we started dropping, then we kind of went sideways. We had a bearish engulfing right here where you can see this candle engulfs 
or the body of it engulfs the, the previous body. And then all we have to do, now this one's a little further away from the moving average, so we may have skipped that, or you can take it, really doesn't matter. There, you do not have to see a certain number of bars for a, a retracement. It could be one bar, it could be 10, it, it doesn't really matter. Again, what matters is that at the time you see the setup, you still have a significant slope lower on the moving average. Now, if we had skipped that, you know, four or five candles later, we have another reversal signal here. There's your bearish engulfing setup. We mark that low of that candle. We get a trade the very next candle. We short it. We put our stop just above the high of it and off it goes, right? Now, this is the key here. Remember at the beginning I said that get used to banking those profits even when they're small. Remember, you define the risk. So when you're wrong here, or, or when the trade doesn't go your way, you take a small loss. But in the long run, what you'll find is that you should have more winners than losers, and your winners are gonna be much greater than your losers. You don't have to know exactly where the bottom is gonna be here. I never expect you to be able to grab the full move. All you want is a piece of that move. And it's more, more, uh, it, it, it'll, it, you'll make up a lot more than just one loss with one trade like this. That's what I was trying to say. And if you look throughout here, as CMG continues to go lower and then pauses and, and, and you know, takes a breather here and pulls back towards that moving average, you'll, what you'll find is multiple setups, okay? Multiple setups here. Now, if you're more aggressive, what you can do is add to your trade at every new setup. If you're conservative like me, you can just hold on and use that as further confirmation that you know you should still remain in the trade, right? So very, very simple and easy to spot. All you're doing is identifying trend and momentum. Momentum, you're using that the slope of the 20. You're waiting for a period of consolidation or retracement or pullback. Once you start seeing that stock pull back, you start looking out for that engulfing pattern. A bullish engulfing for long trades, a bearish engulfing for short trades. And then you mark the, the low, the high, and then it just becomes a matter of managing that trade. And I always encourage people to scale out along the way. So say here you bought you know, three put contracts, right? You wanna scale out. You wanna trail your stop, scale out you can trail it at the pivot highs that's very simple and easy to do you can use a, a a dollar amount that you're comfortable with but bank some profits right sell some contracts bank some profit and then tighten up your stop a little and let the rest run it, it's a very very effective and easy way to trade okay let's look at a few more now how many of you uh, manage retirement accounts or, or like to trade on a longer time frame, like a weekly or a monthly, for example. Let, let's look at a few of those. Those can be really exciting as well because number one, they take a very small amount of your time. Um, you, you know, you can just do this on weekends, you know, once a month and, and, uh, and let it go from there. But the other thing is that if you're managing a portfolio, for the long term, chances are uh, you're buying stocks instead of options and you can focus on dividend paying stocks. So while you hold it and uh, you know profit from the appreciation in the underlying stock, you can also be collecting dividends. You can also be writing calls against. There's a lot you can do. We'll, we'll get into that a little more later if we have time. But look at something like um, McDonald's here right? A Dow component. Very, very simple and easy to spot. When the stock is trending higher, like it has been most of the time here, once you identify that trend and you have the right amount of momentum, and this is plenty, this is more than 45 degree angle, lots of momentum here, you get that pullback. And look at that. Look at this sharp pullback here. This happened over one, two, three, four almost six months of a pullback where we went from like 132 or so down to the 110-ish area, but a 22-point pullback. But look at that moving average 
didn't even phase it, right? So that was telling you that as soon as it hits support, it's likely to turn around and continue trading higher. Look at the slope before that pullback. I mean, the moving average draws it in for you, but here, if you drew it on the price, it'd be even more significant, right? And then a sharp pullback, and look at what we have here. A nice bullish engulfing pattern, a clean reversal pattern. You mark the high, you get a trade within the next two bars, you go long, you put your stop just below the low, and off it goes. Still be in this trade, look at the profit potential compared to the risk that you have on the table, right? That's what this is all about. In the long run, the math really works in your favor. Look down in here, same thing. And again, it doesn't have to be red on green, it can be green on green, red on red, whatever, but for a bullish engulfing pattern, the engulfing bar has to be green. For a bearish engulfing, for short trades, the bullish bar has to be red. And, you know, closing either near its top or its bottom. But again, look at the size of that candle, the amount of risk there compared to that move that happened next, right? Huge. So that's what this is all about. And uh, let's look through a few more quickly. And we'll see, I'm trying to get through some different examples. Have a look at here. Once Home Depot bottomed and started trending higher, and you know, it's perfectly acceptable if you said at this time here that the slope on that 20 just wasn't enough for you, right? I mean, it was decent. It was decent amount of, of momentum. But if you said, no, I'm not convinced this is bottom yet. I want to wait for more momentum. I, I want to wait for these highs to be taken out, whatever you want to do on the next consolidation boom, there is your, your bullish engulfing pattern. Now you could say here, oh wow, uh, risk is way too, too big. There was actually another one earlier on in here, now that I see it, right in here. So that would have been a lot more acceptable, right? You probably would have not added to this, you just would have taken this and off you go, right? Um, it pulls back again here, and what do we see next? A nice clean bullish engulfing pattern. What happens next? Follow through. The follow through has to happen within the next two bars. Remember that. And what's the key to this? It's not the brilliant strategy, okay? It's trend and momentum behind the move. That momentum is like having a gust of wind at the back of the candles propelling it forward, up or down. It doesn't matter. But that, that slope is what matters here. That's the real secret behind this, okay? Works on anything. How many of you trade Forex, right? Have a look at the USD CAD pair, all right? So it, it, it doesn't matter uh, up, down, whatever. You're you got a strong trend, you get a pullback, you see a reversal signal right in here, and off it goes. It pulls back, you see a reversal signal, right? And this one started to go higher and then collapsed, okay? That's why I encourage you to scale out. Take some profits, move your stop up. You should be moving your stop to break even or better as quickly as possible on these, okay? But regardless, when it turns, if it turns immediately and takes you out, your loss will be defined and the winners you have will usually more than, than uh, make up for your loss. <clears throat> All right, let's have a look at uh, Intraday, how many of you are day traders? Something like a Tesla on a one minute, a five minute, that sort of thing. Oops, let's try that symbol again. T-S-L-A, there we go. And let's move this down to a one minute, see if there is anything here. Let's look through today and there we go. Nice and clean. So it starts trending higher. Our job as a trader is just to patiently wait for a pullback. When we get the pullback, right? We want to have a look. And have a look in here. So there was an engulfing pattern in here. And look, the very next bar, it triggered. It traded above the high, right? But then it immediately turned around and would have stopped you out. So your entry was here. Your stop was at the bottom of the candle here. A very, very small amount of risk. It was actually less than a dollar of risk on this candle. And then it 
gives us another bullish engulfing pattern. This time, when it triggers, it just takes off, right? So would have more than made up for that, that little loss. Down in here, there was another one. And this is just today. We scroll back. Yep, there we go. There was another one. Now, this may have been too, too big of a range, too much risk for you. But they're all there, and you can see that, that move that follows through, right? Very, very simple and easy to use uh, and to spot and to trade with. So examples are, are plenty here. Let's see if the, the spies, if there's anything on the five minute. How many of you trade the spies on a five minute? We have many members who do that. Let's see if there was anything today. Let's look through this down move here. Do, do that one look like it just missed? Yeah, we, no, it doesn't look like there was anything there. Let's go a little forward. Yeah, there was one here, but there you go. Don't get too anxious, especially when you're just starting out with this strategy. Make sure that when you see that engulfing pattern here, okay, that the moving average is slow, still sloping. You see here how it flattened out? You did not want to take that trade. And especially if this gap had happened on the, on the next bar that triggered the trade, you would never want to take a gap that big. But then it pulls back and there's a nice clean setup for you, right? So again, any time frame, any market, it really works great. Um, I've been trading with this for many years through all different types of markets, and I can tell you it's extremely consistent. Now, can it, can it be made even better? It absolutely can. And uh, what we've done is put together a what we call a zero to mastery course for you. If you go to tradingwins.com forward slash simple, That'll take you to this page, and this is everything you get in this on-demand recording. You get the complete system from entry to exit, um, but to make it better, we're going to add a couple of different tools for you. We're going to teach you how to identify the most significant areas of support and resistance. That alone will increase the accuracy of this quite a bit, but when you incorporate two Fibonacci tools, one that will help you confirm the entries and the other that will help you set targets. That combination together will really help you pick out the um, highest probability trade setters. Remember, you're, you're going to, on any given day, any given time frame, you're going to find multiple setups to look at. You want to compare them and pick out the one or two that have the highest probability of success and that's what this class is all about is helping you differentiate one to the other and we do so using these tools okay um, also for those of you who may not be trading options yet we're gonna throw in a four-part options Kickstarter program it's just the basics four different videos that cover the, the very basics of options trading that'll give you a, a, a bit of a head start there uh, into your journey with options, which I completely encourage you to do. Options are simply the best thing out there to trade, in my opinion. Um, also, we're gonna throw in a 30-day membership to our Trading Wins Pro service. And what this in, in, involves is five times a week, every Sunday to Thursday evening, I will send you a video recapping what happened that day in the markets, where I think things are going, that's also the platform where I share my trade ideas. I'll tell you what, what trades I'm looking at, not just for this system, but all the other ones we have as well. Also, twice a week, we get together with our members. Uh, every Monday evening and every Thursday morning, you get to come into our room live and ask me any trading-related question you like. So it, that's a great platform to uh, follow up on this. If you have any questions at all on this or you have any other challenges with your trading, um, bring it with you to the live chats. Um, I'll, I'll do my best to help you out. Those sessions are all recorded and you'll receive a recording of each and every one of those. Uh, it'll be put in your own video library. Also, for, for our pro members, uh, every month we do what we call a course of the month for our members. And that's at no extra charge. That is part of your membership. We just did one on earnings and uh, we've, we've got another, the second half of that coming up on hedging strategies. Um, so you'll be able to take part in that as well. That'll 
all be part of your membership. Now, in the spirit of celebration here, since it's uh, Investor Inspiration's fourth anniversary, we want to do something very special. So we're offering this whole package for just $7. Again, just go to tradingwinds.com forward slash simple, and that will take you to this page here. Click on the $7 or on the uh, big green button here that says get it now, and, and you'll be all set to go. I think I have another minute or so. Let me see if there's any questions I can answer for you before I go. Um, ben is saying, should you wait until the stock breaks the 20-day moving average in either direction to place the trade? No, Ben, it's not uh, necessary. What you want to make sure of is that when you see that engulfing pattern, that reversal pattern, that, that moving average is still sloping in the direction of your trade. So if you're taking a long trade, then uh, you want to look for a slope higher. If you're taking a short trade, you want to look for a slope lower. Okay. <clears throat> uh, doo, 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 doo. Uh, Noah is saying, I'd use this strategy to trade, to day trade long at the money puts or calls with a about a 50 delta. Using this strategy, would I get stopped out at the time given much how, how much options move? Um, no, what I would tell you is the way I normally do it is based on the um, size of the move that I'm expecting, I'm either going to trade in the money or out of the money options, not at the money. The at the money options carry the most time value and you're always fighting the theta decay, okay? Or um, for those of you who might not be aware, the theta decay is the, the, the measure of how rapidly the time value portion of that option erodes. So that's always a challenge. So if you're expecting a smaller move, you want to go in the money, about you know 65 70 delta if you're going if you expect a bigger move go out of the money about a 20 25 delta that way you can buy more contracts and eventually make make more money okay um and uh, let's see to do uh, you can get a hold of us at tradingwinds.com or you can send me an email if you like info at tradingwinds.com any questions at all send me an email um, otherwise, tradingwinds.com forward slash simple. That'll get you here. All of this for just $7.